probably 80% of the population lives on the someday isle most of the time. They think and dream and fantasize about all the things they are going to do someday. And who are they surrounded by on the someday isle? Other people on someday isle. And uh, what is the chief topic of conversation on someday isle? Excuses. They all sit around and swap excuses for being on the island. 64,000 is the median number of words per book. Average person reads about 200 words per minute. Simple math will tell us that is one book in 320 minutes. To accomplish this in seven days, numbers say you would have to read for 45 minutes a day. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification button, like, comment, and share. Enjoy. Welcome to the Book of the Week series. Every week, as I read another amazing title, I share it with the world. My name is Igor S.F. Walker. Today, we look at No Excuses, The Power of Self-Discipline by Brian Tracy. So, how about you slow down and relax? Reduce all that noise for just a bit. Make that choice and decide to listen. In this video, we are reminded again, we are given another guide that can, and if you apply this information, will serve as your step-by-step -step instructions to becoming a remarkable person who is capable of remarkable achievements. Stick around till the end. I will share with you some tools I haven't used that will help you tremendously in this game of life. Discover a way to find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. I will share some tools to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management. <clears throat> Why are some people more successful than others? Why do some people make more money, live happier lives, accomplish much more in the same number of years than the great majority? What is the real secret of success? It has been said that if people put as much, much energy into achieving their goals as they spend making up excuses for failure, they would actually surprise themselves. But first, you have to vote yourself off the someday island. Perhaps the most important insight of all in regarding to success is that to achieve greatly, you must become a different person. It is not the material things you accomplish or even acquire that matter so much, as it is the quality of the person you must become to accomplish well above the average. The development of self-discipline is the high road that makes everything possible for you. Self-discipline is the ability to do what you should do when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. Self-discipline is the key to personal greatness. It is the magic quality that opens all doors for you and makes everything else possible with self-discipline. The average person can rise as far and as fast as his talents and intelligence can take him or her, but without self-discipline, the person with every blessing of background, education, and opportunity will seldom rise above mediocrity. <coughs> the lack of self-discipline is the major cause of failure, frustration, underachievement, and unhappiness in life. It causes us to make excuses and also sell ourselves short. Perhaps the two biggest enemies of success, happiness, and personal fulfillment are first the path of least resistance, and second, the expediency factor. 
people invariably seek the fastest and the easiest way to get the things they do want right now with little or no concern for the long-term consequences of their behaviors. In other words, most people do what is expedient, what is fun and easy, rather than what is necessary for success. Sociologist Dr. Edward Benfield of Harvard University conducted a 50-year study into the reasons for upward socioeconomic mobility in America. He concluded that the most important single attribute of people who do achieve great success in life was long time perspective. Banfield defined time perspective as the amount of time that individual takes into consideration when determining his or her present actions. There are two laws that you do fall victim to when you fail to practice self-discipline. The first one is called the law of unintended consequences. This law states that the unintended consequences of an action can be far worse than the intended consequences of that behavior because of lack of long-term thinking. The second is the law of perverse consequences, which says that a short-term action aimed at immediate gratification can lead to perverse or the opposite consequences from those at which it was aimed. <laughs> successful people actually make a habit of doing the things that unsuccessful people do not like to do. It turns out that the things that successful people don't like to do are the same things that failures don't like to do either, but successful people do them anyway because they do know that this is the price that they do have to pay if they want to enjoy greater success and rewards in the future. It is hard to form the habits of self-discipline, self-mastery, and self-control, but once you have developed them, they become automatic and easy to practice. When the habits of self-discipline are firmly entrenched in your behavior, you actually start to feel uncomfortable when you're not behaving in a self-disciplined manner. The best news is that all habits are learnable. You can learn any habit you need to learn in order to become the kind of person that you want to become. It is not that you do not know what to do but rather that you do not have the discipline to make yourself do what you should do, whether you feel like it or not. Success is not an accident. Sadly, failure is not an accident either. You see, nature is neutral. Nature does not take sides. Nature does not care. What happens to you is simply a matter of law the law of cause and effect. <clears throat> the practice of self-discipline enables you to change your character, to become a stronger and a better person. The exercise of self-discipline has a powerful effect on your mind and on your emotions, developing you into a different person from the one that you would have been without self-discipline. Another success principle is that to achieve something that you have never achieved before, well, you must learn and practice qualities and skills that you have never had before. By practicing self-discipline, you become a new person. <coughs> you become better, stronger, and more clearly defined. 
you develop higher levels of self-esteem, self-respect, and personal pride. So study the values you admire. You learn values by studying them closely. The law of concentration says that whatever you draw upon grows and increases in your life. Human beings can be organized along a spectrum as well, from the least to the most developed. The lowest forms of humans are those with no values, virtues, or character. These people always act expediently and take the path of least resistance in their search for immediate gratification. At the highest levels of development of human beings are those men and women of complete integrity who will never compromise their honesty or their character for anything, including the threat of financial loss, pain, or even death. <clears throat> the highest trust societies, those in which integrity is most admired, encouraged and respected, are also the most law-abiding, free and prosperous. At the other end of the social spectrum, however, are those societies characterized by tyranny, thievery, dishonesty and corruption. See, whenever I wanted or needed to learn something to help me, I've returned to learning, to reading, to listening to audio programs, attending courses and seminars. I found that you could, that you can learn anything you need to learn in order to accomplish any goal you actually set for yourself. Over time, I've learned that fully 80% of the population never accepts complete responsibility for their lives. They continually complain, they criticize, they make excuses, they blame other people for their things in their lives, and about most of all, they're not happy. Consequences of this way of thinking can and are be disastrous. Most people grow up believing that if something goes wrong, someone else is responsible. Someone else is to blame. Someone else is guilty. Someone else is the villain and they are the victim. As a result, most people make more and more excuses for the things in their lives, both past and present, that actually make them unhappy. Even if you're not directly responsible for something that happens, like Hurricane Katrina, <coughs> you are responsible for your responses, for what you do and what you say from that moment forward. It takes tremendous self-mastery for you to take complete control of your conscious mind and deliberately choose. The fastest and the most dependable way to eliminate negative emotions is to immediately say, I am responsible. Whenever something happens that actually triggers anger or a negative reaction of any kind, quickly neutralize the feeling of negativity by saying, I am responsible. The mark of a leader, the truly superior person, is that he or she accepts complete responsibility for the situation. It is not possible to imagine a true leader who whines and complains, rather than taking action when the problems and difficulties do arise. The sense of responsibility is the mark of the highly developed personality. The tragedy is that most people think that they already have goals, but what they really have are hopes and wishes. However, hope is not a strategy for success. And wish has been defined as a goal with no energy behind it. Goals that are not written down and then developed into plans are like bullets without powder in the cartridge. They're blanks. 
of the people who have set New Year's resolutions but had not written them down, only four, four percent had actually followed through on their resolutions. But among the group who had written down their New Year's resolutions, an exercise requiring only a couple of minutes, 44 percent had actually followed through on them. This is a difference of more than 1,100 percent in success. And it was achieved by the simple act of crystallizing the resolutions or goals on paper. Now, this does not mean that writing out your goals guarantees success, but rather that it increases the probability of success by 10 times. Writing is called a psychoneuromotor activity. The act of writing forces you to think and concentrate. It forces you to choose what is more important to you and your future. And as a result, when you write down a goal, you impress it into your subconscious mind, which then goes to work 24 hours a day to bring your goal to reality. See, in life, you either work to achieve your own goals or you work to achieve the goals of someone else. Which is it going to be? You choose. The good news is that you do not need to know how to get there. You just need to be clear about what is it that you want to accomplish. And the goal striving mechanism in your brain will guide you unerringly to your destination. When you do think about your goal continually and work on it every day, more and more of your mental resources will be concentrated on moving you toward the goal and moving your goal towards you. The discipline of daily goal setting will make you actually a powerful, purposeful, and irresistible person. This will be building your self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-respect. See, you are your most valuable asset. Your ability to learn, grow, and fulfill your potential is unlimited. Your most precious financial asset is your earning ability. Now, your earning ability is very much like a muscle. It can increase in strength and power year by year as a result of regular exercise. Likewise, the opposite is true too. If left alone, or ignored, your earning ability, just like your muscles, can become weaker or even decline because you have simply failed to upgrade it continually. To earn more, you must learn more. The starting point of your achieving mastery is for you to commit to excellence. I've never met a person who actually made a decision to get into the top 20% in their field who did not eventually achieve it. And I never met a person who actually got there having not made that decision. Making the decision and then following it up with conscious, purposeful, disciplined action is essential. Talent is not enough. Lifelong personal development and commitment to personal excellence uh, requires tremendous dedication, discipline, and willpower. The greatest payoff is that every time you learn and apply something new, your brain releases endorphins, which make you feel happier and more excited about your future. And every time you learn and apply something new, you will have a greater sense of personal power. Your self-esteem, your self-respect, and your personal pride will actually increase. You will feel very much in control of your earning ability, which is one of the most important parts of your life. Mark Twain actually said, Courage is not the absence of fear. It is actually control of fear. It is mastery of fear. If everyone is afraid, then what is the difference between a brave person and a coward? And the only difference is that the brave person disciplines him or herself to confront, to deal with, and to act 
in spite of the fear and contrast, a coward allows himself or herself to be dominated and controlled by fear. The law of reversibility says that if you feel a certain way, you will act in a manner consistent with that feeling. But if you act in a manner consistent with that feeling, even if you do not feel it, the law of reversibility will actually create the feeling that is consistent with your actions. You develop the courage you desire by disciplining yourself repeatedly to do the thing you actually fear until that fear eventually disappears. And it will. When you identify your fear and discipline yourself to move towards it, it actually grows smaller and smaller and manageable. What's more, as your fear grows smaller, your confidence grows actually bigger. Soon your fears lose their control over you. And in contrast, when you back away from here, a situation or a person, your fear grows larger and larger. Soon it dominates your thinking and feeling, preoccupies you during the day, and often keeps you awake at night. Persistence is actually self-discipline in action. Your ability to persist in the face of all setbacks and temporary failures is actually essential to success in life. The primary reason for success is persistence. Likewise, the primary reason for failure is lack of persistence, quitting too soon. In life, it doesn't really matter how many times you do get knocked down. All that matters is how many times you do get back up. If you do continue to get back up and then press onward, you must eventually reach your goal. Each time you exert your self-discipline to persist in the face of adversity, you also increase your self-esteem and self-confidence. Then, as your self-esteem increases, you feel stronger, more powerful, and more unstoppable. Unfortunately, when you do waste time at work, your work does not go away. It continually builds. And then, just like an avalanche overhand, Deadlines come closer and closer, stress mounts up until you finally force yourself to do the job, usually at the last minute, and then you often make expensive mistakes. To be an effective leader, these are seven principles you must incorporate in your leadership behavior and activities. Number one, clarity. This is perhaps the most important responsibility. You must absolutely be clear about who you are and what you stand for. Number two, competence. As a leader, you must set a standard of excellent performance for the organization as well as for every person and every function in the company. Number three, commitment. A leader is absolutely committed to the success of the organization and uh, believes completely that this organization is the best in the business or will be the best in the future. Number four, constraints. The job of a leader is to identify the constraints or limiting factors that actually set the speed at which the company achieves its most important goals of revenue and profitability. Number five, creativity. The leader is open to new ideas of all kinds and all forms of all sources. Number six, continuous learning. The leader is personally committed to reading, listening, and upgrading his or her personal knowledge and skills as an executive. And finally, number seven, consistency. The leader has the self-discipline to be consistent, dependable, reliable, calm, and predictable in all situations. See, the only thing that is inevitable in a life of a leader is a crisis. 
when you rise to a position of leadership, you will experience crises repeatedly. Crises that are unpredictable. I'm Biden and often capable of seriously damaging any organization. There is a direct relationship between your ability to discipline yourself and your behaviors and your readiness to lead. Leaders discipline themselves to plan, to prepare, to organize, to check every detail. They take nothing for granted. They actually ask questions to ensure that they do have a complete understanding of the situation, problem or a difficulty. If you want the mo if you do what the most successful salespeople do over and over. There's nothing that can stop you from eventually achieving the same results and rewards that they actually do. Every salesperson in the top 10% started at the bottom 10%. Everyone who is doing well today was at one time doing poorly. Every person at the top of your field was at one time not even in your field at all, or didn't even know that it existed. I've learned that all sales skills are learnable. You can learn any skill you need. You need to learn to achieve any goal you can actually set for yourself. There are no limits, except the limits you place on yourself with your own thinking. Harry Truman said, in reading the lives of great men, I have found that the first victory they have won was over themselves. Self-discipline with all of them came first. The starting point of achieving financial independence is to discipline yourself, to rewire your attitude towards money. You need to reach into your subconscious mind and disconnect the wire linking spending and happiness. And then you reconnect a wire happiness to the saving and investing wire. What stands between you and your goals are almost always problems and difficulties of some kind. Your ability to effectively solve the problems of daily life can have an enormous impact on your results and on your rewards. There are only actually four ways, four ways that you can change your life. First, you can do more of some things. Second, you can do less of other things. Third, you can start something that you have never done before. And finally, fourth, you can stop certain things altogether. Whenever you are experiencing resistance or frustration, or you are confronted with the need for change, ask yourself, is there anything that I need to do more of, less of, start or stop doing? And there you have it. No excuses. The power of self-discipline. Please do help out. It is easy. Simply like this video so more people can enjoy it. Share it too. Spread the word. Do leave a comment and share your thoughts. Subscribe to my channel and then stay up to date. And the link to this book is in the description below. So buy it, read, and never stop learning, especially learning about yourself and nature. So gift yourself by taking the free human needs test on my website and find out what actually motivates you. What innate human need is driving all of your decisions and your behavior. And if you feel you are ready to improve your self-awareness, social awareness, self-management, and relationship management even further, do check out my Master of Life Awareness program. The links are in the description below. Thank you. Love and respect.